Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel once again. In this video, we are going to learn about erythropoietin. We will see its physiology and its function. We will see the role of hypoxia inducible factor 1. We will also talk about EPO injection, its administration, precautions has to be taken, doses, uses, and adverse effects. So let's begin. Erythro means RBC and poietin means to make. Hence, the hormone erythropoietin acts on bone marrow and increases RBC production. Erythropoietin is majorly synthesized by kidney, by peritubular cells, and a very little amount by liver. This is proerythroblast, which is an immature form of RBC, and it has receptor for EPO. The EPO secreted by the kidney acts on this and converts it into matured RBC, that is erythrocyte. And we very well know that RBCs have got lifespan of 120 days after which senescence occur. Hence, EPO is constantly secreted by the kidneys so that this cycle continues and the amount of RBCs remain constant in our blood. Now, we will see what induces EPO production. Whenever there is hypoxia, that is decrease in oxygen in the blood, it is sensed by kidney and kidneys increase production of EPO and it causes increase in matured RBC and release of reticulocytes. Now, let us see what actually happens. There is a factor called as hypoxia inducible factor 1. It has got two subunit, alpha subunit and beta subunit. In presence of sufficient oxygen, the proline on alpha unit is hydroxylated and proteasome destroy this hydroxylated alpha subunit, which makes it non-functional. But whenever there is decrease in oxygen, the proline on alpha subunit is not hydroxylated and hence it acts on the cells of kidney, enters the nucleus and increases the EPO production. In conditions like chronic kidney disease, where the kidney are non-functional, there is decrease in this EPO secretion and which leads to anemia. And then here comes the role of exogenous EPO, which is known as epoetin alpha beta. It can be used subcutaneously or intravenous. It has got T half of 6 to 10 hours. Now, some of the important points to be considered during administration of EPO. It is only indicated in symptomatic patients with HB of less than 8 gram per DL. Before giving EPO, we should always rule out iron deficiency and it must be corrected. As we have just seen that EPO helps in maturation of the RBCs and it requires functional marrow. While giving the EPO therapy, the target hemoglobin should be 10 to 11 grams per DL, maximum 12 grams per DL. As many studies have shown that using EPO to increase the hemoglobin to more than 13.5 gram per DL is associated with high mortality. The dose of EPO is 25 to 100 unit per kg, either subcute or IV, and it has to be given three times per week. And maximum dose is 600 unit per kg per week. Other than chronic kidney disease, EPO can also be used in anemia in AIDS patient treated with disidodin and in cancer patients who suffer chemotherapy induced anemia. Talking about the adverse effect, you should always keep a check on blood pressure as hypertensive episodes and persistently raised blood pressure is a very known side effect of EPO. It also causes increased blood viscosity and increases the risk of thromboembolic events and occasionally it can cause seizures. So that is it for the video guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, for more such videos Make sure you hit the subscribe button.